All right, so if we have um, rational expressions, so things that are a little more complicated than our last ones, you absolutely want to factor before you start trying to get common denominators. Okay, Do not try to get common denominators with this mess. So let's take a look at this first fraction. Um, obviously, 5 can't be factored. Um, but we can factor a 6 out of the bottom. So that's going to leave us with x minus 3. Um, on the second fraction, x minus 1 can't be factored. Um, let's see. These are all, um, let's see, I can at least take out a 2. That leaves me with 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. That's a minus sign. I didn't get a 2. All right. Okay, and then you can factor that further. Um, it's umbrella factoring, uh, but we end up with 2, 2x minus 1, x minus 3. Okay, and I know I, I kind of skipped some steps in there, but you, know, you guys know how to factor. You can handle this. Okay, so these are the fractions as we have now. Let's get some more space. So we're going to play the same game as we need to get common denominators. So first thing I want to look at is this number out front, 2 and 6. Um, common denominators between those is going to be 6. So I need to turn that 2 into a 6, and the way I do that is I multiply top and bottom by 3. Okay, because then 3 times 2 is the 6 that I need. Okay, next thing we want to look at is x minus 3, and they both already have the x minus 3. So that is good news. We do not have to do anything to get an x minus 3. They both have one of these. Now, notice the second fraction, fraction has a uh, 2x minus 1. So since this fraction has a 2x minus 1, we're going to need that over here as well. So that means we're going to need to put, uh, squeeze it in here, a 2x minus 1 on that first fraction. And we'll do that top and bottom. Okay. Now, that's a little bit messy, but hopefully you can see what's going on. Um, I'll rewrite it. I'll show all kinds of work here. So this fraction is now 5, 2x minus 1. And this one is 3, x minus 1. Okay, now that we've got common denominators, um, we want to combine these into a single fraction. So our denominator is going to be 6x minus 3, 2x minus 1. In our numerator, we're going to distribute this. So we're going to distribute the 5, and that gives us 10x minus 5. And notice uh, this is a negative 3. Do you see this negative here? I just move it over there. Okay, just scoot it up there so it's with the 3. And we'll distribute the negative 3. So that's going to be negative 3x plus 3. Now we're going to combine like terms there. So 10x minus 3x is 7x. Negative 5 and Positive 3 is minus 2. Uh, the denominator stays the same. Okay, now sometimes it's possible that once you've simplified everything in the numerator, you may be able to refactor the numerator and cancel some stuff out. In this case, 7x minus 2, we can't factor that. The bottom's already factored. Nothing's canceling out of this, so you're done. This is your answer. Let's take a look at the second one, wherever it went. There it is. Okay, we're going to start out the same way as we're going to factor. So on the bottom, again, you're going to umbrella factor. Start with 4x and 4x and do your umbrella factoring. Um, I'm going to kind of skip that step. But you should end up with uh, 4x plus 1 and, let's see, x plus 5. I think that's right. Yeah, that looks good. And the second one, um, we can factor out a 3. And that leaves us with 4x plus 1. 
Okay. So let's see. We need to think about our common denominators. So first I'm going to think about this number out front. I have a 3. Um, I don't have a 3 over here. So I'm going to need to include one. So I need to multiply top and bottom by 3. So now I have 3 as part of my common denominator. Great news, they both have 4x plus 1. So that's part of our denominator. And this one has an x minus 5. Obviously, this one's not x minus 5. That's an x plus 5. Um, this one's missing that, so we need to squeeze that in here, an x plus 5. Sorry about that. Top and bottom. Okay, so now they both have an x plus 5. And we have our common denominators. So now let's, re let's rewrite our numerators. We have 3, x minus 8, and 6, x plus 5. All right, now that we have our denominators the same, we can combine into one fraction. Um, so common denominator stays the same. And we are going to distribute. So that gives us... 3x minus 24. And this is a plus 6, so I don't have to worry about it. Remember last time I had the negative I had to deal with? I don't have to worry about it here. Just distribute that positive 6 since it's a plus. So 6x plus 30. All right, we are going to combine our like terms in the numerator. So we get 9x plus 6, it looks like. 3 and then my denominator. Now here, this is exactly what I was talking about before, is there's a possibility that some more stuff will cancel out of this because 9x plus 6, we can actually factor that. Um, we can take a 3 out. So in the numerator, we're going to take out a 3. That leaves us with 3x plus 2. And the denominator is still the same. And now, only after you've factored, if there's something additional to cancel, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm not going to rewrite that as a final answer, but this is your final answer. It's 3x plus 2 over 4x plus 1 and x plus 5.